不持印证经书、佛书、经幡、结缘品。接下来，请收看《大宝法王慈悲开示》。In one of the songs found in the、uh, collected songs of Jason Milarepa, we find his description of what it felt like to give rise to compassion. He said, "When I gave rise to heartfelt compassion, it was like being cast into a pit of fire." 대인주사한다공기리쇠도매배동해가다센도매배동해사람다쇠도매배다가다인지센도매배그다가다에즉소화로든지지개그여부터다세부터나야한 Jitsen Miller up his words clearly tell us that a true compassion is in a sense unbearable. It is an unbearably intense. Feeling of compassion. Taine mikhashi jige niji gomju stane kibo meo chayon dosta. Niji gom 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 dene be miserable chay. Samaro bata ji niji gom 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 ne dene ji dunge kanga samata ju stane be depression ro ta kan miserable ta dene ju chayon do dene si yon do. Some people say that when they meditate on compassion, that they become miserable. That the cultivation, the conscious cultivation of compassion, produces only suffering, misery, and depression for them. 
Yang mana tu happily sama rata ji, ji cene cene kau tu cene mitu, kene cijen di cene me, cido kandu re, kene, eh sembah jauh kita. And a state of helplessness, the feeling of of, oh I'm so sad. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Adre ju. Nizi saati, chitang da dunghe, kashun, mi pa samje, nimi nabba dunghe ra chandu, nabba chandu, nabba chandu, yine ya, mi pa di samje ni mi pa da ngazu tiku chayang wa da kheche pa shira ra cha. Ngazu, dunghe la mi di gawa mara, samje ni la mi di gawa, samje ni kandu ji re sana, samje ni kandu dunghe da, kore ju thandu yur vishita, tada dunghe ki naan shimbi samje ni dunghe dewe pung, अन्य तो दुनिया की नाम है देवात है लेकिन किसी समय जो ठहरना नहीं बराबर थी जैसे कि तंग उन्होंने सेना डाल दो रवार विज्ञापन देंगे तो जैसे अभी इंडोसान तीस सूची की ये ले आना बस ये बच्चा कोई थे कैसे पिछड़ा रहा था नो वेल इट्स ट्रू दैट कंपैशन इज एन अवेयरनेस ऑफ सफरिंग द फोकस � it is the desire to be, it is in part the desire to be able to, in a single instant, free those beings from the suffering in which they immersed and bring them to that happiness that they presently lack. So therefore, it is hopeful and active. Tak semuanya rosak. Tunggu ada kerja zaman aje kerja ni, ni am tu, ni am ni apa tu? Rosak semuanya ini tu sah. Tapi di sini dia kos cengeng je. Tapi sama tak begini mana? Ane tenten pernah dua sama. I think that it is important to remember this, and I think therefore that remembering that while the subject of compassion is in a sense the suffering of beings, the focus of compassion is the beings themselves. And it is the active intention to, as quickly as possible, free beings from suffering. ตาเป็นอะไรที่เขาเรียกมรดกจิตตรงใจอินเจอร์ชาบีนะตั้งเงี้ยเลยอาจจะมรดกที่เขาเรียกตรงดูเขาเรียกเชื่อดูสัตว
So it would be very difficult to fulfill all of them. So the focus has to be not on the uh, how many beings there are and how many wants and needs they have, but on what it is that you can actually do uh, for beings. Simjatamzelia, <laughs> Drupiagamalam, <laughs> I think that in reality, it would be extremely difficult to actually help each and every being without exception. Nevertheless, bodhisattvas make aspirations to do so. Bodhisattvas make both aspirations possible to fulfill and aspirations that are impossible to fulfill. Their courage being immeasurable, they are not discouraged by the impossibility of fulfillment of any of their aspirations. So what we can take from this is that we have to be ready or prepared to do whatever we can and aspire to do everything. That's, that's the causal Mahayana. And now we come to the third of the four dharmas, which is the path dispelling delusion, which I think is concerned with the practice of Vajrayana. I say this because it is taught that only the practice of Vajrayana or secret man, uh, mantra can actually eradicate the subtle habit of a dualistic delusion. Moyer I say this because in the Anutra Yoga Tantras, there is a finally an emphasis on the non-dual integration of the Dharmakaya and Rupakaya that is present in explanations of the stage and practice called unity or unification. We can infer, therefore, that these highest reaches of this higher tantra serves as a remedy for the habit of the delusion of dualism, because it would be that habit of dualism that would prevent achievement of that unity. So in this context, since the Dharmakaya and Rupakaya are presented as an inseparable a unity, uh, there uh, is also presented a remedy to the most subtle habit of dualism.
I don't think, therefore, given the level of such a process, that there's much point in my uh, going on with this, and I'm going to relocate once again to the fourth uh, Dharma, uh, delusion arising as wisdom. And I think the path that is referred to, the path or practice that is referred to in this fourth Dharma of delusion arising as wisdom is what is called the path of essence, which transcends even the higher reaches of the Vajrayana. So this would be the practice of Mahamudra or the Great Perfection. That being said, it's very hard to explain what delusion arising as wisdom actually refers to. Because when explaining something, you have to, to actually communicate a meaning to those listening. You, by necessity, have to be explaining it in a way that fits within the listener's sphere of experience. And since this is, by definition, outside our sphere of experience, it's very hard to talk about. <laughs> Don't we all have the experience of experiencing something and then when we try to relate or tell of that experience, we cannot find words that capture it. They might capture part of it, but lack something else and so forth. Well, this is an instance of that. Then... Certainly we can say what it's not. It is not, this fourth dharma is not a statement that independent delusion, that is to say delusion as delusion, could ever arise as wisdom since they're contradictory. So the easy way to get around that misconception is to say, well, we're talking about the pure aspect of delusion. It is the pure aspect of, of or within delusion that arises as wisdom. However, I think that that doesn't really capture it. I think that's not really quite right either. Uh, we have um, a very strong habit of taking all appearances, all that arises in our experience, as other than ourselves. If once anything becomes an object of experience for us, we uh, perceive it as other. And therefore, anything that is um, said about uh, such, fix such fixation as long as one still has the habit of such fixation, is really only going to add to it, because we'll take that as other too. Mm -hmm. 
But in sum, what is being pointed out in this fourth Dharma is that there is no wisdom outside of delusion, and there is no delusion other than or outside of wisdom. It is only our thoughts of good and bad that cause us to perceive these as two different things. Therefore, ultimately, there is no delusion to be abandoned and no wisdom to be acquired. What this comes down to is the discovery that we must find or discover wisdom within thoughts. We do not try to cause thoughts to cease, but we discover within those thoughts that we have up to then regarded as symptomatic of delusion. As for how to do this, you have to learn this at the feet of an authentic guru whose practical uh, instructions will enable you uh, to learn how to do this. You can't learn it from a, a glib talker like me. Well, let's say that I finished explaining the four dharmas of Gampopa. I don't think that delusion arose as wisdom, uh, but let's say that we've talked about how it might. And therefore, let's say that we're done. All of the Buddha's teachings, without exception, and all stages of the path for the three types of person are included in these four dharmas. And it is important that as practitioners we attempt to implement in our practice all of the Buddha's teachings without exception the lesser and greater vehicles, as well as Tantra, all that our practice be all-inclusive of all of the varieties and levels of what the Buddha taught. <laughs> I say this because sometimes we Kajupas place so much emphasis on the oral instructions of the Guru that all we limit our studies to one little volume of uh, practical or special instructions, and it is as though we reject the validity and importance of the vast scriptures that contain the Buddha's countless teachings and the authentic commentaries upon them. That's not quite right. Uh, 
However, there need be no sense of contradiction. What is meant by a practical or special instruction, upadesha, is instruction that contains within it the, all of the essential points of the Buddha's teachings, summarized or uh, so that you can actually practice them, since, practically speaking, we could not hope to literally study every single a word spoken by the Buddha and every single commentary upon them. So the function of special instructions is to put all of the Buddha's teachings in your hands so that you can practice them. But make no mistake, the original source of these special instructions is what the Buddha taught. <laughs> Secular ethics are over the Dana Singh, the Chulu, the G. Kachu, the Tami TV, Chulu, Mongols, and the Muni Yonti, or Tizuya, Dina, and Dui of Indusane, Dan Donang as a Chuny, I'm reaching his Dusane, that they get Roger Shambo. Energy, Benedict, Sosurani, get the Munship of the Society, Hak Chet, even Dovich, the Lord Chip of the Chitang, Teleaji, Kachu, the Susuki, Roger Yang, or the Nishawate, Ketchum Share. Furthermore, in the first Dharma, the Dharma becoming Dharma, I mentioned this morning that this includes both secular uh, ethics, ethical humanism, and also the other religious traditions that principally emphasize the vehicle of uh, devas and humans. In our practice of the Buddha's teachings, we must be open-minded. We must not reject what is good in the world around us. We must open-mindedly learn about these things. It is um, not appropriate for us to become narrow-mindedly ignorant of all that is not part of the Buddha's tradition. Um, this has been my third visit here to commentary on Adama Chakra and the opportunity to not only visit you here but also to speak to and with you uh, causes me to feel very, very fortunate, very lucky, and also a little bit embarrassed because I don't feel that, uh, much like a person who should be lecturing others. But I do so in response to the great um, love and a great respect with which you uh, treat me, and I thank you uh, for that. The... 자세면은데오물디쇼데자세면은데아 
and come up with chillers at the Kandiji Miji, Gazole and Rishit is Jawacha Sarasam Tangu. This commentary on the Dharma Chakra was founded by the previous Jawan Karmapa to serve as his seat in North America. It therefore has become the hub of the Karmapa's activity uh, on this continent. I should therefore speak a little bit about of what the Karmapa's activity consists. Then, Gansuman was a singer, Kamapa Kunti Tas Shivane Sunde, Kamapa Kunti Chibe Pardo, Karme Garzins at to Shumare, Ta Kandar Kurgevne, Chong Yeme to Kurmambo Gevje, Garza, the Kurmambo and the Zum Sadrava, Kurmambo Gevse, the Chong Yeme to Paz, the Legion of Sayre, the Tapel Luton Yenras Pustazre. As many of you know, from the time of the fourth Karmapa up to the time of the tenth Karmapa, the Karmapa primarily moved from place to place, traveling in a great encampment that was called the Karmapa's Great Encampment. And all of them uh, lived uh, in tents and went to and fro uh, throughout Tibet. <laughs> Uh Now, given the uh, nature of the land, travel from place to place in Tibet was in those days extremely difficult and required at least one or many days' journey to get from one place to another. One reason for the establishment of the Great Encampment was that while many, many people wished to meet the Jawan Karmapa, most were unable to do so. So he decided to go to them and therefore traveled throughout Tibet even to some of the most isolated areas. Nowadays, in some of these isolated areas that were visited by previous Karmapas, while there are no Karmakaju monasteries nor extensive Karmakaju practice or teaching, they still recite Karmapacheno and remember with great fondness and devotion the visit hundreds of years ago of one of the previous Karmapas to their area. Of course, the Karmapa's uh, fundamental seat was Tsurpu Monastery, but an indication that the Karmapas never stayed in one place for too long is that in accounts of their travels it will say, it will say and then he was welcomed effusively at Tsurpu Monastery. If someone actually lives there, they don't have to be welcomed effusively. Therefore, the, the fourth Jong Karmapa, Rupe Dorje, expressly stated 
that an aspect of the Jong Karmapa's activity is to travel all over the place and meet disciples of different nations, cultures, and languages, fulfilling their hopes and aspirations. That is restriction of that is so the uh, previously established great encampment of the Kamapa ended during the life of the 10th Jawan Kamapa Chuying Dorde. And since that time, the great encampment uh, has not been reestablished. The travels of the successive Jawan Kamapas came to be, therefore, more restricted, which, has, which uh, may have something to do with the fact that their lifetimes became shortened as well. <laughs> However, the great 16th Jawan Karmapa traveled from Tibet to India and after that uh, began to travel all over the world, meeting with people of different nations and languages. So in a sense, he greatly reactivated this aspect of the Karmapa's activity. What am I saying here? What I'm saying is that as this is a hub of the Karmapa's activity, we need to be welcoming. We must make everyone who comes here feel welcome, without any bias, without any limitation, through a sect, color, nationality, or gender. And we need to be free of bias uh, in favor of all those who we've seen before, old students or old friends, as opposed to those who come newly or for the first time. As um, facilitators of the Karmapa's activity, we must be free from that bias as well. And <laughs> Uh, 
Um, there are many people that I really feel the need to thank. First and foremost, Kempokato Rinpoche, and also the many uh, people who have worked here, who were disciples and members of the entourage of the 16th Jawan Karmapa, who have since passed away. Also, Bardo Rinpoche and Mr. Tenzin Chunyi, and the many uh, administrators uh, of this monastery, past and present. I thank all of you, because without what all of you have done, uh, this uh, place wouldn't exist, and what we have done here wouldn't have occurred. And now I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to chant the uh, aspiration of Mahamudra. There's actually a kind of a competition going on here between uh, Mahamudra and uh, Dzogchen because uh, Dzogchen Panlupramshe, coming from Dzogchen Monastery, has the name Dzogchen. He represents Dzogchen. And I uh, here represent Mahamudra. However, I think Mahamudra is winning because I'm on a higher throne. <laughs> Sebelon 
原本是以收容弃养之流浪狗为救护对象，十七面遭扑杀。后因收养的流浪狗日益增多，进而成立专门照顾流浪狗的养护园区。然而，园区的扩建速度仍旧赶不上流浪狗的快速增加。于是，另安置近三百只狗儿，迁移到中华护生协会的两所园区，令其获得安养。于二零一四年七月份统计，救狗协会至少救护了超过八千只流浪狗，目前与护生协会共同护养近千只的狗儿与养护园区。除了救护流浪狗之外，救狗协会并长期提供素食狗饲料给其他照顾流浪狗的爱心人士，亦经常与护生协会合作，透过各类相关活动，呼吁大众重视生命、爱惜生命，使人与万物之间皆能互爱共存，消弭暴力之气，促进社会祥和。白财神法会附设藏式奶茶与吉祥饭。入秋的八月十四日，新逢明净月功德日，善行与恶行成一千万倍。诺诺格西回到东山吉祥书坊，特别举办白财神法会。在藏文化里，秋天一样也是收割的季节，正好修持白财神。白财神又名白宝藏王，是观世音菩萨的化现，身色如雪山洁白。代表消除一切众生贫困所致的污秽。白财神除了驱病、除一切贫苦、罪恶障碍，还能增长一切善业，富饶增上。法会当天，格西特别准备藏式奶茶与吉祥饭与大家分享。时间：八月十四日，星期一，下午两点至四点。地点：佛教慈悲置业东山吉祥书坊。宜兰县东山乡东山路二段四百七十八号附设停车位，电话零三九五八零二八六零三九五八零二八六零三九五四零四五五零三九五四零四五五。佛教慈悲置业宜兰大悲观音道场起见孝亲报恩良皇宝忏暨中丰三十系念法会。日期九月十一日星期一到九月十六日星期六，恭请慧泰法师、慧亮法师、慧公法师、广护法师及法务指导法师共同主法。九月十一日星期一到九月十五日星期五，梁皇宝忏法会，每日上午九点开始，下午一点半开始。九月十六日星期六，中丰三十系念超度法会，上午九点开始。下午一点半开始，恭请三师法师共同主法。法会备有贡品礼盒及白米，发给中低收入户。地点：宜兰大悲观音道场。联络电话：零三九八九九三一九零三九八九九三一九。敬邀菩萨参与熏习，同斋法义，共沐佛恩。严师对女子的教言：关于女子不舍日常俗物，人能获证佛果的教言。莲师亲授空行母，依系错加之宝藏口诀。尊名为莲花生大士，其受身不受母胎染污的大师，是由莲花中神妙化身的。
，威能显赫的藏王引请他进入雪域，在条幅建造桑耶的这片土地之后，莲花生大士常住在金珠松林上。于此，曾有七位不平凡的女性：卡谦的错家佛母、雪卡的金刚狐女、秋罗的光灿礼拜女、卓地的马婷马女、马尔贡的珍宝顶饰女、青帝的闪光女，以及汝阳的马蹄女。他们一起摆设了一个黄金曼达，并有蓝绿色的花朵，以代表皇家七宝。他们以米酒和各种美味佳肴献上会供之后，提出这样的请求：“大师，请您垂听，请与我们分享您完美无瑕的身形显现，您纯净的话语，以及您超越一切概念作意的心。”卡谦公主错家佛母如此向莲师说道：“像我这样的女子，才是浅薄、愚钝不灵、未受教育且心胸狭窄。请您赐予我，能在这一生以女性之身获得正觉的教言。请赐予我了解和记住简单能领会与了悟的教言。”莲师开示。法性的真实自信，不是此心可以攫取的一个对境，它没有维度大小，且不属于任何类别，是任何方法业任的性质，因此，无需由明智的人来做分析。它单纯是关于了知，了知从一开始就一直在你之内的心。因此，无需知识才学，别管是否聪明，只要安住就好。这真实自信不属于智力的范围之内，由于它是本自己有的清净、无声且自然现前，因此无需在心中执持它，也不需要机灵敏锐，就别管什么才智了。平等性的心既不宽广，也不狭窄。佛意与有情众生之心是从同一个根基衍生而来，这根基也就是觉醒的心。了悟它即是正悟，不了悟它便在轮回中流转。
走了。